good morning students in this class we are going to discuss about the next concept in the hydrogen unit that is conversion of permanent hard water into the soft water now before that first we will discuss the basics here what is meant by permanent hard water first we will discuss what is meant by hard water what is meant by hard water the water which contains soluble salts of calcium or magnesium or sometimes both calcium and magnesium if these are present in the water that water is called as what hard water means what should be there in the hard water the water which contains soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are called as what hard water now what is meant by permanent hard water what is meant by permanent hard water if the water contains if the water contains soluble salts of calcium and magnesium with chloride with chloride or sulfate that is here these four salts are available that is when water contains calcium chloride or magnesium chloride or calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate or sometimes any two any three or all the four if they are present in the water that is called permanent hard water means when water contains calcium and magnesium salts with chloride or sulfate are called as what permanent hard water now what is our work here it is convert the permanent hard water into the soft water means we want to convert permanent hard water into the soft water how to convert is just to check here hard water means it contains calcium or magnesium or sometimes both calcium and magnesium now if you remove the calcium or magnesium calcium and magnesium from the water indirectly it is converted into the soft water presence of calcium and magnesium soluble salts is called as what hard water absence or when the water is free from the calcium that is there is no calcium there is no magnesium soluble salts in the water that is called hard water means when you remove the calcium magnesium salts which are present in the permanent hard water then indirectly it is converted into the soft water means what is our main role remove the calcium magnesium salt from the permanent hard water indirectly it will convert into the soft water means our main role is to remove the to remove what calcium or magnesium salts from the permanent hard water then indirectly it is converted into the soft water now the question is how to remove the calcium and magnesium from the permanent hard water permanent hard water means the calcium magnesium should be attached with the chloride or sulfate that is called permanent hard water now the question is how to remove the calcium and magnesium from the permanent hard water for this one just to check now this calcium chloride magnesium chloride next calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate if they are present in the water that is called permanent hard water now these salts are soluble in water soluble in water now when when it is soluble when the calcium chloride is soluble magnesium chloride is soluble calcium sulfate is soluble magnesium sulfate is soluble in the water it is difficult to remove it is difficult it is very difficult to remove from the water for this one which we should have to convert these soluble salts of calcium and magnesium into the insoluble salts insoluble salts of calcium and magnesium for example what are the insoluble salts of calcium magnesium calcium carbonate insoluble in water magnesium carbonate insoluble in water next to magnesium hydroxide is also insoluble in the water means calcium chloride magnesium chloride calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate are first converted into the maybe calcium carbonate maybe magnesium carbonate maybe magnesium hydroxide that is calcium converted into the calcium carbonate magnesium should be converted into the magnesium carbonate or magnesium hydroxide these are insoluble in water these three salts are insoluble in water 
if they are insoluble if they are not dissolved in the water you can remove these salts very easily by simple process that is called as what filtration filter model filtration then indirectly you have removed the calcium from the water magnesium from the water in this way you can remove both calcium and magnesium from the hard water by this method by this method but just remember our main rule is convert soluble salts of calcium and magnesium into the first insoluble salts of calcium and magnesium then just go for the filtration now question is how to convert soluble salts into the insoluble salts for this one you should have to add some chemical some chemical so that soluble salts are converted into the insoluble salts by adding the chemical the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts next after filtration you will get the soft water now here this is the basic now completed now there are four methods are there for converting the permanent hard water into the soft water what are those i will write first four methods are there one two three four first one is by treatment with washing soda washing soda second method is by calgans method by calgans method next to third one is here third one is ion exchange method what it means i will explain later just write on heading ion exchange method and the last one is by synthetic resin method synthetic resin method these are the four methods by using these four methods we can convert the permanent hard water into the soft water what are those four methods you know already by treatment with washing soda by calgans method by ion exchange method by synthetic resin method now for this one we will discuss one by one first we will discuss basics now here the first one is which method by treatment with washing soda washing soda means what is the formula na2co3 10s2o this is called washing soda already water is there water only we want to prepare there right now we want to soft the water convert the hard water into the soft water already water is there therefore i am writing only na2co3 na2co3 when this na2co3 is added into the permanent hard water here it is when this na2co3 is added into the permanent hard water the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts insoluble salts after converting insoluble salts you can just filter it filter it you will get the soft water this is the process which is taking place in the by treatment with washing soda once again i will repeat one washing soda that is na2co3 that is what Na2CO3 when it is added into the permanent hard water permanent hard water the soluble salts of the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts why they are converting into insoluble salt when they react with the Na2CO3 the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium converts into the insoluble salts right after getting insoluble salts of calcium and magnesium just to filter it you will get the soft water this is happening in the by treatment with the washing soda that we will discuss now first one now here it is in the by treatment with washing soda what we are using na2co3 just remember that is called washing soda 10s2 is there don't forget huh? now i will write the reactions already you know the process how it is happening i will write the first one only reactions by treatment with washing soda first one we will discuss by treatment with what washing soda now just to check here just to check how to write the explanation is when the washing soda is added into the permanent hard water the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts and after filtration we will get the soft water now we will write the reaction now 
here permanent hard water means what it contains maybe calcium chloride or magnesium chloride maybe calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate i am writing mcl2 m means maybe calcium or maybe magnesium means m if it is calcium that is called magnesium chloride if it is m is magnesium that is called magnesium chloride maybe calcium chloride maybe magnesium chloride i don't want to write two two times reaction therefore in place of m if you write the ca it will it will give cacl2 if you write mg in place of m it will be mg cl2 right only one reaction i am writing for both calcium and magnesium m means maybe calcium m means maybe magnesium when this calcium chloride or magnesium chloride treated with the treated with the washing soda that is Na2CO3 Na2CO3 just observe here M right what is the charge on calcium plus 2 what is the charge on magnesium plus 2 valency is how much plus 2 because second group here Na is there plus 1 valency is there CO3 minus 2 Cl minus 1 right now I will write the reaction here M will react with the CO3 it will become MCO3 MCO3 and here 2 Na 2 Cl left 2 Na 2 Cl it will be 2 Na Cl 2 Na Cl now this MCO3 means if M is the Ca then it will be CaCO3 na or if M is the magnesium if M is the magnesium what is the formula is MgCO3 I told already calcium carbonate magnesium carbonate are insoluble in water means they settle down they settle down in the water because they are insoluble in the water these can be removed by the simple filtration simple filtration method and you will get the soft water you will get what soft water right now now you are out sir if it is sulfate maybe calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate if it is present in the permanent hard water then how to soft it how to convert into the soft water same process just check the reaction here when <clears throat> calcium sulfate m means what maybe calcium or magnesium if m is calcium calcium sulfate if m is magnesium magnesium sulfate when calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate are present in the permanent hard water when it is treated with the washing soda that is na2co3 now just check what happens here m co3 again m co3 plus here na2so4 same formula na2so4 whereas this m co3 that is m co3 means maybe ca co3 or mg co3 again it is insoluble in the water when it is insoluble insoluble and no kargala nira kargala hudri in madabots filter if you get the filtration you will get the soft water means indirectly you have removed the calcium magnesium here also indirectly insoluble means you can have removed the calcium or magnesium from the hard water means it is free from the calcium and magnesium therefore it is called as what soft water after doing this one just you have to filter it filter then you will get the soft water now just check here soluble salts of calcium chloride or magnesium chloride converts into the insoluble salts of calcium chloride or magnesium chloride means soluble are converted into the insoluble after filtration this calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate is removed from the water means the water is now free from the calcium and magnesium soluble salts of calcium and magnesium that is called soft water here also soluble salts of calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate if it is treated with Na2CO3 it converts into the insoluble salts when it converts into the insoluble salt just filter it after filtration in Directly calcium magnesium is removed from the hard water means now it is a soft water this is the first method that is by treatment with the washing soda next we will go for the second one Calgan's method Calgan means what the formula for the Calgan is NaPO3 six times or it is also called or another formula is NaPO3 how many times six times now multiply six it will be Na6 P6, right, uh, 3 into 6, how much? 18. Na6, P6, O18. Its name is sodium hexametaphosphate. I will write in the short form sodium hexametaphosphate. Sodium hexametaphosphate. Commercially in the shops, it is called as what? Calgan. It is called as what? Calgan. Chemical name is sodium hexametaphosphate. 
now when this is also added into the permanent hard water when this calgon is also added into the permanent hard water the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble now that is only i am writing if this one is the water that is permanent hard water it contains soluble salts of calcium and magnesium or calcium or magnesium when it is treated with the calgon when it is treated with the calgon these soluble salts of calcium magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts of calcium and magnesium when permanent hard water treated with calgon the soluble salts of calcium and magnesium are converted into the insoluble i means what insoluble salts of calcium magnesium after filtration again filter here after filtration you will get the soft water after filtration means indirectly this calcium and magnesium are removed from the water means you will get the soft water this method is called as what by treatment with the calgon's method now we will see that one for this one i am using another paper second one second method for the conversion of permanent hard water into the soft water is which one calgon's method second one i will write the heading by calgon's method now your doubt is what is meant by calgon sodium hexa meta phosphate sodium hexa meta phosphate the formula is na6 p6 o18 or it can also be written as na po3 six times right commercially it is called as what calgon now when this is added into the water already you know soluble salts of calcium magnesium are converted into the insoluble salts how they are converted we will write the reaction here for this one i am writing the reaction now just to check for the calgon <clears throat> calgon what is the formula na6 p6 o18 when it undergoes into the ionization when it undergoes into the ionization it will produce as calgon anion means two atoms of sodium are removed means it will be na4 p6 o18 when positive removed right what is the charge minus 2 minus 2 this is called complex anion complex anion why it is formed because we have removed the 2 na plus from this complex or calgon right this is called as what complex anion complex anion now here it is when this complex anion comes in contact with the calcium and magnesium which are present in the hard water that is when this complex anion comes in contact with the calcium or magnesium which is present in the hard water it will form a insoluble complex it will form what insoluble complex that is only i am writing here just to check here just check m plus 2 means maybe ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 clear ah m plus 2 means maybe ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 when this comes in contact with this complex anion that is formed by the calgon that is na4 p6 o18 minus 2 here minus 2 charge is there here plus 2 charge is there therefore this will attract the m plus 2 this will attract the m plus 2 and it will form na2 again i am removing 2 na don't forget na2 m p6 o18 again charge is minus 2 because you have added plus 2 again you have removed plus 2 that is in the form of sodium 2 na plus right now here just to check here this na2 m na2 m p6 o18 this is a insoluble complex here it is insoluble insoluble means when you add this complex that is calgon na6p6o18 it will form the first complex anion complex anion by the loss of 2na plus atoms right this complex anion what it will do is it will catches all the calcium and magnesium ions it will catches all the calcium and magnesium ions which is present in the hard water and it will form a complex and it will form what complex that is insoluble now after filtration after filtration you will get the soft water after filtration means you are going to remove this complex this complex means indirectly you have removed m m means calcium magnesium therefore you will get the soft water this is the third method of third method of conversion of 
permanent hard water into the soft water. That is, this is the second method for the converting the permanent hard water into the soft water. Now we will go for the third one, that is ion exchange method. Now, third one, here. Third one we will discuss, third one is by ion exchange, name itself indicating what is happening there, ion exchange method means ions are exchanging ions are exchanging how we will see for this one i am taking rough paper here now just check first we will discuss ion exchange right ion exchange means a is having ion i1 and b is having ion i2 a is having ion i1 b is having ion i2 right both will exchange a will give i1 b will give i2 to a right it will be a i2 b i1 this is called ion exchange method this is called as what ion exchange method here we are using in this method zeolite zeolite is used as the best ion exchanger zeolite zeolite what is the formula of zeolite sodium aluminium silicate sodium aluminium silicate right here this is called zeolite sodium aluminium silicate now what happens here this sodium will give the right this zeolite this zeolite will give the sodium that is na plus ions to water to water and indirectly water gives water gives ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 ions to the zeolite mg plus 2 ions to the zeolite what is happening is just to check zeolite is giving this zeolite is giving na plus ions to the water and water is returning ca plus 2 mg plus 2 ions to the zeolite and when this zeolite takes ca plus 2 mg plus 2 ions it will convert into the insoluble salt convert into the insoluble salt after filtration you will get the pure water or soft water now just check once again i will explain here zeolite zeolite what is the formula yes sodium aluminium silicate next water water it is hard water means it contains ca plus 2 ions mg plus 2 ions now just check what happens this zeolite will give na plus ions to the water and water gives ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 ions to the zeolite this zeolite is giving Na plus to the Na plus to the water and water is giving Ca plus 2 or Mg plus 2 ions to the zeolite. Means when this zeolite will take all Ca plus 2 and Mg plus 2 from the water, it will become insoluble complex or insoluble. It is insoluble. After getting insoluble, right, with contains calcium and magnesium, right. Now, if you filter it, means indirectly you have removed the calcium and magnesium from the water you will get the soft water that is called ion exchange method i will write here reaction it will give more clarity for you here we are using zeolite zeolite what is the formula sodium aluminium silicate now just check now i don't want to write a full complete once again right therefore i will write naz here in place of zeolite i am writing naz where where z is aluminium silicate clear Z means what? AlSiO4. In place of AlSiO4, I am writing Z. Now, we will see the reaction. Now, just to check. For balancing, I will write 2 here. 2 NaZ. When reacts with the M plus 2 in the water. M plus 2 means maybe Ca plus 2 or Mg plus 2. Maybe Ca plus 2 or Mg plus 2 which is present in the water. When this is zeolite. This is zeolite. When this zeolite reacts with M plus 2, that is Ca plus 2 or Mg plus 2, which is present in the hard water, what happens? Ions are exchanged. Ions are exchanged. This zeolite will give Na here, and here M, Ca plus 2 and Mg plus 2 from water will take the zeolite. Now, what is the product is here? MZ2. MZ2. It is losing the N ions and it is taking the M. Therefore, it will be MZ2 plus 2Na plus. 2Na plus. Now, this MZ2 is insoluble insoluble in water right insoluble means what happens after filtration after filtration you have removed the m m means ca or mg is removed c or mg is removed means you got what soft water you got what soft water this method is called as what ion exchange method ion exchange method
in the examination you have to write only reactions it is enough next we will go for the fourth method that is by synthetic resin method 3 over first one by treatment with washing soda over by calgans method over by ion exchange method over last one is synthetic resin method conversion of permanent hard water into the soft water by synthetic resin method now just check here nowadays what actually what is happening is nowadays at present days the hard water may be permanent hard water or temporary hard water usually converted into the soft water usually converted into which water soft water by synthetic resin method only by synthetic resin method only why synthetic met resin method is using because it is more efficient the synthetic resin method is more efficient than other methods even it is more efficient than these zeolites for the converting the permanent hard water into the soft water therefore nowadays the hard water converted into the soft water by using synthetic resin method only now we will see how it will work now synthetic resin method here there are actually two resins are there one is synthetic cation resin another one is synthetic anion resin two resins are there synthetic cation resin synthetic anion resin now synthetic cation resin means what synthetic cation resin means here this is used what it is we will discuss what is the role of synthetic cation resin is synthetic cation resin is used to remove the cation from the water remove cation from water means here ca plus 2 mg plus 2 cations and anions are these are cations right therefore we want to remove the ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 from the water therefore we should have to use which one synthetic cation resin only synthetic cation resin only if you want to remove the anion if you want to remove the anions also from the water maybe cl maybe so for such type of anions if you want to remove from the water you have to use synthetic anion resin but our role is But our main role is to remove the but our main role is to remove the ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 that is cations from the water therefore we should have to use which one synthetic cation resin now what is meant by synthetic cation resin is for this one i am writing what is meant by synthetic synthetic cation resin is here RSO3H is called as what synthetic cation resin synthetic cation resin here R means R means large organic molecule organic means carbon should be there directly bonded with the hydrogen right R means large organic molecule when it is attached with the SO3H group then it is called as what synthetic cation resin synthetic cation resin here it is cation when large organic molecule when it is attached with the so3h that is cation then it is called as what synthetic cation resin now how it will work for example this r so3h that is synthetic cation resin when it is react with the small amount of nacl cation exchange will take place it will form r n a r n a here na cation is there here r is anion is there therefore both will react right it will form r na r na right now this r na r na reacts with m plus 2 m plus 2 means what already you know m plus 2 means 
may be ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 which is present in the water which is present in the water when this rna that is a synthetic cation resin only it is also r is large organic molecule na is cation synthetic cation resin when reacts with ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 that is calcium ion or magnesium ions which are present in the water what happens there is a exchange again here exchange of ions will take place now here for balancing i am taking two times it will be R2M plus 2Na plus R2M plus 2Na plus this R2M is insoluble this R2M is what insoluble now R2 means what R means what large organic molecule M means what Ca plus 2 when this Ca plus 2 reacts with the large organic molecule which is in the synthetic cation resin what happens it will form R2M R2M it is insoluble it is insoluble means you have to filter it after filtration indirectly you have removed the R2M R2M removed means M is removed M is removed means Ca plus 2 and Mg plus 2 are removed from the water therefore you will get the soft water soft water this method is called as what synthetic resin method right now just check here also after removing in each method if you check we are removing calcium magnesium but another cation is again present in the water is again present in the water if you check from the first right here magnesium calcium is removed it is insoluble means if you filter it indirectly you have removed the calcium and magnesium but if what is left in the water nacl is left means na plus is there cl minus is there again right here also when you remove the calcium magnesium it is insoluble you can remove this one again what is left in the water na2so4 which is soluble again it is left in the water in the first method in the second method also right what is there in the water na plus is there na plus in the third method what is there in the water na plus this mz2 here it is mz2 mz2 is insoluble in water that is m means calcium magnesium that you can remove easily but here na is there na right na is again it is in the water means here also in the last method that is synthetic resin method also you are removing calcium magnesium calcium and magnesium but one more cation and anion which are again in the water only in the water only means it is not 100 percent pure because here due to presence of such type of ions maybe na maybe cl there is no calcium magnesium but there is other ions are there na it is not 100 percent pure water almost pure water is not there right to get 100 percent pure water you have to use both synthetic resin and synthetic cation resin and synthetic anion resin when you use both synthetic cation resin and synthetic anion resin you will get the almost pure water almost pure water how we will see now now just check for the pure for for getting more pure water highly pure water if you have to use synthetic cation resin synthetic anion resin first i will take synthetic cation resin first i will use synthetic cation resin here cation should be you have to take if you want to prepare highly pure water the cation should be hydrogen cation should be hydrogen we don't want any other ion or any other element in the water only hydrogen and oxygen should be there because water formula is h2o only hydrogen should be there only oxygen should be there there is no other atom or element should be present in the water then it is called highly pure in this all the four methods before all the four methods what happens some other elements are like this na plus cl minus so4 are again in the water only therefore it is not highly pure if you want highly pure there is no any other elements atoms are there right therefore i am using hydrogen here now just check rh r large organic molecule h hydrogen cation hydrogen is cation attached with the large organic molecule therefore it is synthetic cation when it reacts with the m plus 2 maybe ca plus 2 m plus 2 means ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 what happens it will form r2m here I, for balancing i am writing 2 plus 2h plus means hydrogen is removed here in this way exchange is taking place right now it will be r2m 2h plus r2m is again insoluble r2m is again insoluble it is removed by which method filtration removed by which method filtration means in the water what is left in the water what is left i will write here what is left in the water h plus 2H plus what is left here 2H plus is left uh, now just check now this is for synthetic cation resin now I will use synthetic anion resin 
synthetic and ion resin synthetic anion resin for this one right here are large organic molecule attached with the anion nh2 here it is anion large organic molecule attached with the nh2 nh2 is anion therefore it is called synthetic anion when it reacts with water what happens it will be h adds to the n therefore it will be r nh3 oh r nh3 oh nh3 positive charge oh negative charge now just to check what happens here it is just check in the h2o h is there oh is there h is added to nh here it will become nh3 and oh as it is that is r nh3 plus and oh minus when it reacts with the anion in the water anion in the water means maybe cl minus maybe so4 minus 2 etc then i am taking here x minus it may be cl minus it may be now so4 minus 2 it may be hco3 minus etc when it reacts what happens anion exchange will take place here it is if oh minus will comes here and x minus comes here now it will be r nh3 x here x is coming here and oh is going here now therefore what is left here r nh3 x it is left here r nh3 x again this r nh3 x is insoluble insoluble right it can be removed by filtration it can be removed by filtration means what is left here again oh minus what is left here oh minus in the cation resin what is left h plus in the anion resin what is left oh minus oh minus cation resin h plus is left right in the anion resin oh is left just observe here just you only have to check here in the cation resin 2 h plus is left in the anion resin oh minus is left this h plus oh minus both will combine here it is h plus plus oh minus both will combine again it will form the water means there is no any other element is present in the water therefore this is called highly pure water highly pure water just remember for the production of highly pure water you have to use both synthetic cation resin and synthetic anion resin in the synthetic cation resin the cation should be taken as hydrogen so for therefore when the calcium and magnesium cations are removed right what is the cation left in the water is H plus. It should be H plus. In the anion resin, the anion should be OH minus. Anion should be OH minus. So that when the anion is exchanged or when the other anion from the water is removed, the anion left in the water should be OH minus. H plus in the cation resin, OH minus in the anion resin, both will react again and it will form again the product that is water that we want only. Therefore, it will give the highly pure water. After completion of this conversions, next we will go for the another concept that is heavy water. Heavy water. Next our concept is heavy water. The formula for this one is D2O. Heavy means more weight. Right? Heavy water. Now for this one, first I will take rough paper here. Now, normal water formula is H2O. Now, what is the mass? What is the molar mass? What is the molar mass of water? H means one hydrogen mass is one. Right? Uh, therefore, two hydrogen means two gram. Plus one oxygen atom mass is 16 gram. Right? One mole actually it is two, 16. How much it is? 18 gram per mole. The mass of water is how much? 18 gram per mole. Now, what is the mass of D2O? Now, D2O. Here D means it is the one of the isotope of hydrogen. There are three types of isotopes of hydrogen are there. Already we have discussed in this unit only. Protium, deuterium, tritium. Protium all are having the same atomic number 1, 1, 1. But protium atomic mass is 1. Deuterium atomic mass is 2. Tritium atomic mass is 3. Here deuterium atomic mass is 2. Right. Uh, 1 deuterium atomic mass is 2. But total how many deuterium are there in the D2? Or 2. 2 into 2 is 4. Plus 1 oxygen atomic mass is 16. Total how much it is? 20 gram per mole. Means here normal water atom mass is normal water molar mass is 18 gram per mole and the here d2o mass is 20 gram per mole therefore this d2o is called as what heavy water heavy water why it is called heavy water reason is here weight deuterium one deuterium atom atomic mass is 2 gram right a one hydrogen atom atomic mass is 1 gram 
here atomic mass of one hydrogen atom is one gram atomic mass of one deuterium atom is two gram therefore normal water molecular mass is 18 gram and the deuterated water that is d2o is molar mass is 20 gram per mole therefore it is called heavy water heavy water now how it is prepared question is how it is prepared first we will discuss the preparation preparation now just check First one is prolonged electrolysis. Prolonged electrolysis means what? Prolonged means for long time. Normal, more than the normal time electrolysis. That is called prolonged electrolysis. You have to pass the electric energy for a longer time, much more time. That is called prolonged electrolysis of water means in the water if you pass the current continuously what happens there is a formation of or there is a formation of what deuterated water or heavy water will take place means for example this one is normal water normal water if you pass the electricity here it is electrical energy for long time what happens this water normal water is there deuterated water is also there because isotopes of hydrogen normal water h2o is there and also d2o is there normal water is h that is pro uh, protium here i am calling this one as protium loses proton easily proton easily whereas deuterium will not loses proton easily therefore slowly there is an increase in the amount of deuterated water that is d2o or heavy water in this method we can prepare the heavy water the first method is prolonged electrolysis of water prolonged electrolysis of water and the second method is the second one is by fractional distillation already you have studied fractional distillation some basic principles and techniques in the organic chemistry you have studied the fractional distillation in this way also you can prepare the heavy water or deuterated water third one is it is obtained as byproduct it is obtained as a byproduct in some fertilizer industries in some fertilizer industries in these may matters we will get the heavy water heavy what water next we will see the uses of heavy water uses one by one we will discuss first one is first use of heavy water is it is used as moderator in nuclear reactors it is used as moderator in nuclear reactors moderator means one which controls the reaction which slow downs the reaction means in the nuclear reactor to control the reaction mechanism this heavy water that is d2o is used that is called as what it is used as the moderator in the nuclear reactor the role of moderator in the nuclear reactor is slow down the reaction this is one second one second one is now for studying the reaction mechanisms reaction mechanisms heavy water is used heavy water is used i will take one example for more clarity for example here this one is rough paper i will use here now here h3po3 one of the ortho phosphorus acid right here structure is p double bond o oh oh h h now just check p one two three o three p o three how many hydrogen one two three h three p o three this is the structure of h three p o three when this is added in the water it is giving only two h plus ions when it is added in the water when it is added in the water it is producing only two h plus ions our question is which h plus ions it is giving hydrogen one is 
forming ion hydrogen 2 is forming ion hydrogen 3 is forming ion that is first hydrogen third hydrogens are formed ions or second hydrogen and third hydrogens ions are forming ions or right only first and second are forming ions in this way the question is there clear once again i will repeat when this h3po3 is added in the water it gives you only 2h plus the question is which hydrogen ions are coming out first hydrogen second hydrogen these two na or these two na first da, second da, or second da, third da, or first da, third da. this is the question which two hydrogen are forming the ions this is the question for studying this one first what should we have to do is first this hydrogen first this hydrogen is replaced by the deuterated d deuterated d now just check if here after when it is added into the water if only one h plus and one d is there then 100 percent this d is ionized this hydrogen is ionized in this way we can say right otherwise if both are h plus only then we can say that these first and second hydrogens are ionized whereas this d is not ionized this is third hydrogen is not ionized the hydrogen which is directly bonded with the phosphorus is not ionized in this way we can study the reaction mechanisms by using the heavy water by using what heavy water this is the second use third one is for studying the structures same for studying the structures of oxo phosphoric acids for studying the here i will use another pen for studying the structures of structures of oxophosphorus acids again we are going to use this one only next it is also used for the preparation of this heavy water dto is also used for the preparation of is also used for what preparation of preparation of other deuterated compounds other deuto rated compounds means by using the heavy water that is due to o, you can prepare the other deuterated compounds examples i will write here examples how now i will write few examples ca c2 plus 2 d2o gives rise to c2 d2 here it is deuterated compound other deuterated compound plus ca o d2 calcium hydroxide you know right uh, here it is deuterated hydroxide there is no h is there oh2 if it is ca oh2 then it is called calcium hydroxide but in place of hydrogen it is deuterated now right now here so3 plus d2o gives rise to d2 so4 in place of d if it is hydrogen it will be h2so4 if it is hydrogen h2so4 but it is deuterated water we are using therefore it is deuterated sulfuric acid h2so4 means sulfuric acid here deuterated deuterated sulfuric acid similarly last one al4c3 plus 12d2o gives rise to 3cd4 plus 4alod3 aloh3 aluminium hydroxide Correct, but here it is deuterated aluminium hydroxide in this way here it is we prepared the other deuterated compounds other deuterated compounds here this one is other deuterated compound this one is other deuterated compound this one is also this one is also this one is also by using the deuterated water by using deuterated water by using deuterated water we can prepare the other deuterated compounds other deuterated compounds this is the another use of the heavy water that is d2o Now, last concept is left in this one, that is dihydrogen as a fuel. Last concept in this unit, dihydrogen as a fuel. We will discuss now. Simple concept. We will finish within 5 minutes. Dihydrogen as a fuel means dihydrogen can also be used like a fuel like a petrol like a diesel it can also be used as the fuel in the vehicles now i will write the points it will clear for you now here first point is h2 is used h2 means dihydrogen only here h2 means dihydrogen is used as a fuel as a fuel for 
पैसेंजर्स वहीकल पैसेंजर्स वहीकल्स मीन्स इन द कार्स बस एक्सेट्रा द डाइड्रोजन कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज एज ए फ्यूल लाइक पेट्रोल लाइक डीजल एक्सेट्रा नाउ वाई इट इज यूज एज ए फ्यूल वाई डाइड्रोजन यूज यूज एज ए फ्यूल बिकॉज डाइहाइड्रोजन आफ्टर कंबशन दिस इज फर्स्ट पॉइंट दिस इज सेकेंड पॉइंट डाइहाइड्रोजन आफ्टर कंबशन इट प्रोड्यूसेस लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट therefore it can be used as the fuel therefore it can be used as the fuel again it is producing the very large amount of fuel therefore it is more efficient therefore it is more efficient than the than the petrol and diesel petrol and diesel now for example if 1 liter of petrol is giving 60 km average right if you take same amount of dihydrogen gas nearly 200 kilometers average will be there because of it will produce large amount of heat that is the dihydrogen is more efficient than the petrol and the diesel by using the dihydrogen another very important thing is dihydrogen is an environmental environmental friendly fuel dihydrogen is an environmental friendly fuel environmental friendly fuel now if you use the petrol if you use the diesel it will right it will pollute the air it will create the pollution right because it will release the carbon dioxide gas whereas in place of h2 if you use in place of petrol and detour petrol and diesel in place of petrol and diesel if you use the dihydrogen as a fuel it is not polluting the air or the pollution will be very small amount right therefore i can say that this h2 is an environmental friendly fuel next by using h2 the pollution amount is reduced next to fourth fourth one is if you use the h2 if you use the h2 as a fuel it reduces fuel then it reduces our potential dependence on potential dependence on important oil or imported oil means now what we are doing is we are taking the petrol and diesel from the other countries we are taking the petrol and diesel from the other countries means we are importing the petrol and diesel from the other countries if we are using h2 as a fuel then that dependence will be reduced then the dependence on the petrol and diesel will be reduced that is this point right if h2 is used as a fuel it will reduces the dependence on the imported oil right from the other countries next last one is last one i will write here fifth point fifth one is here h2 is used as the fuel in spacecraft means in the rockets in the aeroplanes etc the h2 is used as fuel nowadays also it is used as the fuels in the rockets why h2 is used as the fuel why not petrol why not diesel because the h2 is more efficient here it is h2 is more efficient than the petrol and diesel h2 is more efficient than the petrol and diesel and also the h2 is lighter weight right a lighter weight than the petrol and diesel therefore large amount of h2 we can pick right therefore h2 is used as the fuel in the rockets because of its efficiency and the less amount of weight next but but you may ask if this h2 is having this much of applications or advantages if it is used as a fuel why you are not using the h2 as a fuel in the vehicles in the buses etc because because several if you want to use several significant 
several significant challenges challenges must be must be overcome overcome before it can be used as fuel or used widely widely means when this dihydrogen is used as fuel widely we have to face several challenges several problems will be come therefore for facing this one we are not using the dihydrogen as a fuel in the normal vehicles in the rockets we are using the dihydrogen as a fuel now this completes your hydrogen unit and in my next class we will start the s block elements thank you